Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Derek Martin, and I am Senior Manager of Solution Architects at Blackboard. And I am joined today by a number of uh, Blackboard CRM developers for this Ask a Developer uh, session. Um, we don't have an agenda or slides to work through. This time is yours to connect with uh, a Blackboard CRM developer, ask you questions. Uh, and I'm going to actually ask each of them to just quickly introduce themselves to you. Just say quickly your name and uh, where you're based, how long you've been at Blackboard. So we'll start with uh, Adam. If you want to come off mute and introduce yourself. Yes, uh, I'm Adam Hassler. I'm based in Charleston. I've been with Blackbod for 10 years. Great. Uh, Patton, you're off mute, so I'll ask you to go next. Uh, my name's Patton Hilliard. I've been with um, Blackbod for about 16 years now, and I'm uh, based in Charleston. Okay. Dave. Hi, my name is Dave Hendershot. I've been with Blackbod for about 16 years as well, and I'm in Denver, Colorado. Great. Daryl. Hi, I'm Daryl Eichner. I've been with Blackbud for 13 years, and I'm working from wild and wonderful West Virginia. OK. Uh, Sumit. Yeah, myself, Sumit. I've been working with Blackbud for approximately 12 years now, and I'm based in India right now. OK. Uh, Alex. Hi, I'm Alex Erickson. I'm based in the UK and I've been with Blackboard for about 10 years now. Okay, and Tudor. Hi all, I'm Tudor Pop. Uh, I've been with Blackboard for 15 years and based in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Okay, thanks everyone. So, uh, I don't see, let's see, do we have any questions yet? No, so if we uh, if you have questions for the developers, get them into the, um, the Q&A, please. Um, maybe to, to kick us off, if you wouldn't mind, if you're a Blackboard CRM customer already, um, maybe just put in the chat um, where you're from, uh, what organization you're with, and maybe as a bonus, just tell us where your Blackboard CRM is. Is it hosted by Blackboard? Is it um, on campus, on premises? Do you host your uh, instance of Blackboard CRM with a third party. It um, would be great to hear from you. Um, I'm going to uh, start. There's some questions coming in the chat. So while folks are chatting, uh, chatting those in, I'm going to start getting those into the um, uh, off to the developers to answer. So uh, Sarah has kicked us off with a great one. Where's a good place to get started? for a total newbie um, that is just starting to develop for Blackboard CRM. I can lead off on that one, Derek. Um, I think there's probably what I'd call three core resources that are good just to have ready, have in your back pocket um, to be able to use. One is actually the, the Blackboard CRM Help Center. This is literally just the user guides, but even I sometimes with the breadth and scope of CRM don't know how necessarily something should work. And that's a good resource if you're like, oh yeah, what is this particular feature? The next thing I'd recommend if you are if you're writing code for CRM, right? If you're customizing the, the shell or anything like that, is our uh, Infinity SDK. And I'll post all these links in. Derek, you think chat would be the right place for this? Yeah. Okay. I'll post these links in chat once I'm once I'm done giving the answers. So this is going to give you kind of the rundown on like what are specs how do you customize a page right the one-on-one -on -one of just getting started customizing blackbot crm and i think the final resources i'd recommend is the developer community and there's a, a bunch of different communities one more focused towards crm one more focused towards sky api but that's where you actually can talk to your peers and sometimes some of us also monitor that channel um, and ask questions on any issues or other concerns you might have or something you just might run into and want to know about in developing on CRM. Uh, does anyone else in the group have a, another recommendation? I think you nailed it. Yeah, you, you've hit all the good ones <laughs> that I would have said as well. OK. Um, we have a question in the chat. 
um, a few questions in, in the chat that maybe indicate that we need to, to slow down a little bit and uh, actually, um, let me share my screen here. So when we say BlackBot CRM, um, we have several different donor management solutions at BlackBot. Uh, let's see if folks can see my screen here. There we go. Um, so many of you have, uh, I'm sure almost everyone has heard of Razor's Edge NXT, right? Um, for very small organizations, we have a solution called eTapestry. Um, the solution that we're, we're talking about today and that these um, folks, my colleagues here work on is BlackBot CRM. And this is our enterprise level uh, constituent relationship management solution um, that the largest um, higher ed, institutions, healthcare foundations, and nonprofit organizations um, use uh, to manage their fundraising operations. Um, so it, it does share some things in common with Razor's Edge NXT. The general purpose of why you have this solution is the same, um, but it is a more sophisticated solution in terms of functionality and data model. Um, so if you're an RE NXT customer, um, you're welcome to hang out, um, but these folks won't be able to answer questions generally about Razor's Edge NXT. They're here to help us, um, or to, here to answer questions about BlackBud CRM. So there are a couple of questions in the chat about it. There, are, uh, I see a question from, from Griffin. Um, I hope that answers that part of the, the question. Okay. Uh, let's see. So Stephen has a, uh, a question that's a little bit technical. When creating a custom batch type, we utilized CLL, CLR data forms. One of the things we noticed that was when we were running through the batch process is that the ID and batch ID were not being populated no matter what we did. Is there a way to get access to those? Stephen, it's probably worth uh, getting a little more details on uh, what you're attempting to do. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind uh, um, sending some of that information over and uh, I don't know, Gab Gabriella or uh, Derek, is there a preferred way of doing this? So we can look into what uh, is being asked here a little deeper. Yeah, Stephen, if you want to um, put a little more detail into a question um, for, and we can see if we can answer it now, I might ask one of the um, developers to go backstage and, and check the answer or the question there. Um, let's move on to another question. Um, so, uh, Hung has a question yeah, about. We, yeah, go ahead. Before we jump on, just in terms of information, is this, you know, Custom batch types, you're talking about uh, the initial add of the row, the editing of the row. Is there, if you could let us know which parts, if you're seeing it anywhere, that would also help us dig in a little more. Okay. I see a question in the chat about um, from Erica. I know that um, several of the developers are working on. Um, bringing Sky UX. So Sky UX is BlackBot's open source UX framework that we're working to bring to every solution in our portfolio. Um, you, if you've seen RE NXT, if you've seen FE NXT, Financial Edge NXT, um, you've seen Sky UX. And we announced um, in last fall's product update briefing that we were embarking on a project to bring Sky UX to BlackBot CRM uh, to replace the existing uh, user interface. And Erica is um, asking if there's an update. Um, I don't know if there is an update um, since the, the spring product update briefing, but maybe uh, I know that the tutor, um, Dave, Alex, Daryl, you're all working on the Sky UX initiative. What can you say about progress so far? 
Yeah, I, I can give a brief update on that. So I would say we're still, you know, somewhat early in the process. What we've been working on is taking all of the components within BlackBot CRM. So think about how we're rendering a screen, the data forms, the data list, pieces like that, and converting them to their Sky UX equivalents, right? And part of that process will involve some redesign because design patterns have changed over the last couple of decades. And so we're hard at work basically building the, the fundamental platform. And as we get those components in place, we're gonna start looking into then hey, which forms need conversions? Because as you all know, many many forms in CRM are not standard. You just generate the HTML and you're good to go, right? They have custom JavaScript, custom other pieces. So once we get a lot of those core components, we're gonna start looking at, you know, what do we do about these convertible forms? And then finally, we're gonna start really digging on, finally. But during this process, we're also gonna start talking about, you know, how do we handle the transition process how we're going to help you all, you know, handle customizations. We're going to make available, and we don't have more specific updates on that at that time. But I want you to know that we're looking into it and we're working on it. And and Dave, I'm curious if you can take a question for me. Sure. Um, are you are, are we working through the interface screen by screen, or mm. is it more of a user interface paradigm by user interface paradigm? Yeah. So. Originally, and this is a bit of a design change that we made or an approach change, I should say, we were we were looking at the screen by screen and we were looking at converting a particular page, a particular screen, starting with some of the, let's say, more fundamental and straightforward components to kind of help the team get more and more experience with Sky UX. Um, that's changed a little bit and we're focusing more on components right now because we want to be able to do components. Let's say we want to be able to get, for instance, your view form working and all of those components rendering before maybe we do a search list or a drop down and then going from there into more complicated uh, components such as all the grids that exist in CRM. So I'd say primarily we are going on a component by component, component basis, but we're also keeping in mind what would be a good user flow? What, what are things that we could really, you know, be able to show people how the development is going? So the pages and the screens of the workflow influence how we're prioritizing things, but we are focusing on getting those components fully fleshed out, working, all the pieces on those components working. And so that's kind of our approach right now. Great. Thank you. Uh, I see a question from Catherine. Does Sky API work with self-hosted Blackbot CRM? Okay. I'm going to safe harbor here and say I'm not product management and I can't can't put out the guarantee. I, I would need to chat with product management to really confirm this. But I say our, our current intention today is to make Sky API work with all instances of CRM, including uh, self-hosted. Okay. And that is that's Sky API. You're you're answering oh, the question for Sky Sky, Sky API. API right? I was still on Sky UX. Um, yes, Sky API is supported with. Blackbot CRM, uh, there is no additional charge to access it. One of the hurdles we've discovered with organizations trying to implement is working through their particular authentication and network settings. So just to give everyone here a high level overview of how Sky API works, basically when a request comes into Sky API, it's gonna send that request over to our services and we're gonna try to route that to a CRM system. Um, when it's configured within Blackbot hosting, we've kind of got that, that set up. We know the security and authentication settings, and those calls tend to come through without a problem, especially when BBID is enabled. Uh, some of the limitations of Sky API with on-prem is that we, we don't currently support, for instance, connecting through a VPN, you know, working through a firewall, pieces like that. And if you have some kind of custom SSO or custom auth setting, those, those calls may not work as well. So Sky API is supported for self-hosted, but with that asterisk of it may depend on what authentication settings you have. It may depend on what firewall or connection needs your organization has. So if you have any questions, of course, feel free to contact um, support and we will try our best to answer your questions. Okay. And then I will say, oh, go ahead, Tudor. No, I was I was going to say that while we're on the Sky API topic, there was a question around constituent update batch and how to further extend it via extensions or via Sky API. 
Arlette asked that question. Um, I think the answer you know I can give you about extensions is that that's been the traditional way of extending functionality in CRM. So that's one option. Uh, regarding Sky API, I will uh, kind of defer to the Sky API specialists on this call uh, to speak to that, uh, how to further extend not only constitution update batch, but code in general and um, how to leverage the Sky API uh, functionality uh, in general. Okay. Um, before I, I start talking again, does anyone else want to field this one? Uh, David, I could speak to this um, around batches in Sky API. So if you look now, we currently have the enhanced revenue uh, add row capability in Sky. And uh, I believe we, you know, I can't speak for products and our exact roadmap, but I believe we'll be introducing different batch types as customers and partners request them. But as far as extensions, uh, Sky API doesn't handle any custom code or customizations, anything like that, because it has to serve all clients or all customers are using the same API. So at the moment, we're not um, focused on how, how can we work customizations um, that we don't necessarily have that on our roadmap, but what we're uh, planning to do is just expand the number of endpoints uh, around batch. We've discussed some other types of batch that uh, we, we could add and expose through Sky API, but um, we don't have any plans necessarily to use extensions or customizations to batch through Sky API at this point. Patton, That's if I'm, I, am I correct saying that, uh, you know, Sky API would open kind of uh, the possibility of creating custom applications, custom code, leveraging those Sky API endpoints. So then it, it, you know, the problem becomes not of, hey, I'm trying to use what Blackbot, what CRM has in terms of extending functionality, but basically now you have a variety of options that don't have to go through the proposed Blackbot extension model in order to leverage Sky API. Yeah, that's correct, Tudor. You know, that's one of our aims is just to expose uh, the endpoints that partners and customers need so they can build integrations and applications on top of that. But I did want to mention there is um, one capability that will allow uh, people to reach customization. Say if you have um, a code table, custom code table, those can be accessed. We have uh, a few generalized endpoints. Um, not all of them have, have been exposed. And if you're, you're familiar with the SOAP interface, which essentially Sky, we're just exposed SOAP uh, endpoints and infinity uh, into the REST Sky ecosystem. But we have general form data list, search list endpoints that um, can provide access to, to custom forms or to any form. So, so you, we have a data form endpoint. Uh, it's not exposed yet, but this is something we've looked at that would allow you to access any data form in the system. But the overall design philosophy around Sky API was to um, stay close to the BizOps endpoints. If you're familiar with that set of SOAP interfaces, they're very prescriptive. So they tell you exactly what field, what data type it is, um, and that's what most Sky API endpoints uh, look like. But there are some generalized ones. One you can see now is ad hoc query. So you can access any ad hoc query. And so there's a lot of flexibility with that. But um, our main focus has been to release the BizOps endpoints that uh, people have an interest in using. Okay. Before we move on to the next question, I did want to confirm what Dave said earlier about Sky UX that it will be available to all customers, whether you're hosted with Blackbaud, whether you're hosting on-premises or with a third party. Um, we're, we're doing that because um, the user interface, Sky UX, is more accessible um, and more compliant with standards. Um, that said, Sky UX is going to allow us to do some things that we can't do today in the existing user interface, like integrate with um, artificial intelligence powered features uh, that we won't be able to offer to on-prem customers. So there will start to be more of a functional difference between uh, Blackboard CRM 
um, hosted by BlackBaud and BlackBaud CRM, not hosted by BlackBaud. Um, you may have heard us talking a little bit this week about BlackBaud Copilot, for example, um, a you know Gen AI uh, intelligent assistant that sits right in the user interface that you can query your own data universe. That is something, an example of something that will only be able to deliver um, to our, our BlackBaud Cloud Operations hosted customers. So there's a little bit of nuance to the answer to that question, but uh, hopefully that that covers it. Um, there is a question about, and I just, I think it maybe went away. I don't know where that question went. Okay. Um, will Sky UX allow for any notable additional features or flexibility when using the SDK to create customizations? And maybe this is a total noob question because I am not a coder at all, but when, when we're fully in Sky UX and we have full Sky API coverage, should organizations continue to use the SDK? So Derek, I think a lot of that, the answers to that are unfortunately for right now, a big TBD. Um, right now we're really focused on building the core implementation of Sky UX. And I think like you mentioned, right, that's going to allow improvements to accessibility. That's going to allow new capabilities. Um, we're going to look into things probably like Sky, uh, Sky add-ins, right? So that integration will build new options. And I think will also allow improved things like marketplace integrations, right? We have a lot of third parties writing customizations for CRM. And a lot of those will go through uh, Sky API and those add-ins might start being surfaced in Sky UX, but in terms of the SDK and future customizations, um, we're gonna we're gonna take some time. We're gonna keep looking into that, and uh, we should have more information on that in the future. Okay, thanks. And you you did bring up right one of the value propositions for BlackBot CRM customers with this move to Sky UX is that. There are lots of applications that have been developed for the Razor's Edge NXT platform um, that because they, they leverage Sky UX to um, you know, embed their, their functionality in the Razor's Edge NXT uh, user interface in Sky UX, uh, and because they, they use Sky APIs to connect, these potentially can be easily ported to BlackBot CRM. So we're excited about the possibility of you know, all of a sudden having um, access to, you know, a much broader set of applications in the BlackBot marketplace that will now be compatible with BlackBot CRM as well might require partners to do a little bit of work yeah. um, to make that that application um, also work with BlackBot CRM. But um, the the level of work would be low enough that we think that it will improve the um, the level of access to applications in the, the marketplace. That's precisely it, Derek. Um, we've actually even developed a few brand new endpoints just for use with, not just for use, but intended for use with Sky API, such as the donor list. And part of the reason for doing that was to actually bring a bit more parity into the design paradigms between our various capabilities. And this is to ease the, the transfer of partner integrations between various BlackBot products. So you might imagine a partner has a marketing solution, right? Email response, things like that. We want to make it as easy as possible, as standard as possible, and have clear documentation for, hey, I wrote this for Razor's Edge, right? How do I write the equivalent for BlackBot CRM? And we're also keeping things like that in mind with the new endpoints that we put out. Great. Thanks. Uh, Zar has a question about um, they use database read only and credentials rotate every 90 days. And that period seems a little short for some of the work that they do. Um, have we considered giving clients more control or options to control when the credentials rotate? Um, I was in an OAuth session the other day and there was, again, not a coder, but do refresh tokens work in the same way? That might not be a question this group can answer. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Chris yeah, let's, says, I think oh, sorry, we'll get that question to bbdfdays at blackbot.com. I, I know the folks who probably right. have that answer, and, uh, and, and we can definitely get you a response. Um, 90 day credential rotation seems 
fairly standard across BlackBaud, but there may be a way to, to leverage another capability. So send that question over to bbdevdays at blackbaud.com and, and we'll be sure to get back to you. Thank you. Um, Chris it says, we're about to start implementing, congratulations. Um, one Razor's Edge API feature we often use is testing what we are about to submit is valid. Is there an equivalent um, BBCRM method or alternative recommended practice for testing and rollbacks? Chris, when you say uh, testing what you're about to submit is valid, do you mean in terms of um, like set testing out an API call and ensuring that it works and like seeing whether or not you receive an error message or or something else. And Chris, I'll kind of start broadly answering. And if you want to post in chat with your more information, um, I'm not sure what your implementation is, but I would say most BlackBot CRM uh, environments come with both a production and at least one non-production environment. And what I've seen most of our customers do is actually use their non-production environment for all kinds of development and testing, right? And some of our customers even have two, three different environments, such as you know staging, development, training. Um, and I would recommend that if, if you're testing things like API development, customizations, anything else, those non-production environments are a great place to do that testing. And if I did not cover your question, Post in chat, and we'll uh, we'll circle back around to it. And make sure you're getting that detail. I'd also like to make the plug for uh, automated testing. Uh, I'm huge into that. That's kind of one of my things. Um, if you use CLR components, which I like to use, I, I think those are a lot more testable. Uh, the short version is, if you are clever with how you structure all your classes, you can. If there are uh, part parts of your um, feature that do web requests or they hit the database or something like that something that would turn the test into an integration test if you were to run the whole thing you can structure your classes cleverly to enable those to be mocked out so you can mock a response in your testing automation to do that i also see in the chat there's uat um, that i know some of the people who've done a lot of work on that framework uh, that's yeah going into ui testing that's a little bit more of an integration flavor there's a time and place for that that's perfectly good if you want to test end-to-end -end workflows. But if you want to look at individual components, um, I really like CLRs and mocking out web calls so then you can test the business logic within your feature, be it a, a business process, global change, what have you. Uh, that's another great way to do it. You could run those locally. Uh, if you have a setup where you can, you have a build pipeline, I don't know what you're all working with, uh, you can get those to run as a part of that uh, deployment if you have that integrated into your source control solution. Um, but at the very least, you can be able to develop and run those locally to give you that additional conf confidence in what you're pushing to your testing environment is going to work in that testing environment. Of course, there's the manual testing there as well that David spoke to earlier. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah, Darrell, that's a great point. And not just for new features, right? But any kind of anytime you want to do an upgrade, your staging environment gets upgraded. If you have automated tests, that can greatly shorten the time it takes and also the effort your organization needs to put in. Absolutely. Great tips. Um, Shannon has a question about database growth management. So they're having some issues with, um, especially with developed list production team, creating information library selections, exports. Could you recommend solutions to limit the growth of our transactional database? They're, CRM prod database went from 100,000 tables to 140,000 in just a single year, and they're constantly hitting space limitations. So Metal, maybe I'll let you answer this one, but I do believe we have a feature in CRM that allows you to purge a lot of the auto-generated tables um, that various processes, including exports, uh, create uh, while in use. It's yes, a global change, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we do have a global change. We can you can put a certain type of tables. Not all are exposed to the global change, but we have certain types where you can do a selection and get those purged out. And in case anyone hasn't seen it, um, you can definitely find this in the development guide. But let me 
attempt to share my screen here and I can just give everyone a quick look at some of the capabilities here. Uh, maybe it's screen. All right. Um, and Derek, will you let me know when you can see my screen? Or Sumit, can you see my screen? Yep. OK. So this is the database growth management tab. I mean, from the saying of database growth management, it sounds like um, person asked the question, Shannon might know th about this. But you can find it under the administration database growth management area. Um, and you can run a process. We usually want to schedule to run automatically that gives you a breakdown of where your database growth is happening and also helps you keep track of and purge some of the information. One thing to know, Shannon, since you specifically mentioned database tables, um, a lot of different processes in CRM will create a table to store data. Um, things like the generate output, such as business processes, as well as things like static selections. So it's useful as you're going through to determine if there's something you no longer need, such as the history on a business process um, such as audit tables that either have exceeded a certain time. Um, give my test delete audit table data. And you can specify what audit tables you want to delete from and whether or not it's a time area. And also, one thing we noticed, for example, is that constituent images can take up a lot of space when they're audited too. So you can actually purge those constituent audit uh, tables as well. But you have a variety of tabs here that you can use to manage this kind of growth in your system and actually create and run business processes to purge that data. And as always, if, if you're running into issues and, and you're looking for places you can purge data and you can't seem to find anything else here, you know, feel free to contact us and we might be able to give you more information. And one point of advice, if you purge the data, you lose history, right? So you have to be cautious about what you're yeah. purging based on your organization policy. Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea, um, especially before you do a major purge. You know, if you're getting backups, keep those backups handy, right? Because those will those, you can think of your backups as your cold storage, right? To just hold on to that information in case you ever need to go back to reference that information. So it's another good idea. Uh, Daryl, folks are asking in the chat uh, about if there's. Um, a reference for automated testing? I, I dropped some information in there that the kind of tests that I was oh. talking about, just like raw unit tests against the CRLR class, I don't think we have any documentation for that. Um, but I did answer in the chat. Good news is that you can take, if you have a custom uh, catalog now with CLR classes in there, you can create a companion unit testing project within that solution for it. And I, I think there's just this is just standard Microsoft stuff. None of this is proprietary at all. That you can then have the unit testing project reference and directly call uh, classes, methods, what have you, inside of your your catalog to exercise that functionality. There's there's none right. of that that's SDK specific. I mean, as long as you have the CRM SDK already on your machine and you can create these these uh, CLR components, you should be able to create that that companion unit testing project to directly exercise that code. It sounds like there's enthusiasm, Daryl, for a follow-up session at some point <laughs> on maybe next year's BB Dev Days. Looks are eager hey, you know, it, there's story. a lot of interest in that. You know, I, I might be able to be conned into leading that because unit testing, automated <laughs> testing is kind of my jam. I'm, I, I guess I'm a weirdo in that respect, but I, I love it when I can run a when I can make changes in my code, run an automated test suite, be confident in that code coverage and see a whole bunch of little green checks light up and be confident that the changes I'm pushing are good. Cool. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a topic that's in demand apparently. So good for you to know that. Good indeed. <laughs> okay. Um, Eric asks, we use the educational code table extensions in order to store short codes for things like degrees. Currently, we have to manually sync those for our student loads. Is there a way to programmatically access the add form for the extension to allow for description entry? 
Is that too specific? Derek, I hear that question again. I kind of caught half of it, and I'm almost yeah. ready to it in the question. I'll, I'll repeat. Uh, we use the educational code table extensions to store short codes for things like degrees. Uh, currently, we have to manually sync those for our student loads. Is there a way to programmatically access the add form for the extension to allow for description entry? Oh, that's a good question. I wish we had a someone from our professional services team here. Um, I think send that one over to uh, the BB Dev Days email and we will follow up on that. I feel like there should be, um, because I know, I mean, every CRM thing generates a spec. I'm just not sure if there's an automated endpoint that we generate for that. So we can follow up on that one to get that information. One way that you could potentially, that. I'm sorry if I'm Go stepping ahead. on anyone. One way that you could potentially do that is, I'm just thinking off the cuff here, is all of that uh, we, we do, if you're talking about an ad form specifically, there's a data form save request that is uh, just a standard uh, BlackBot AppFX server item that you could you can spin up one of those. You'd have to provide some information like client app info. Uh, I believe there is a sample to do this from external code on the BlackBot community GitHub. I can post a link to that if uh, some of you are unfamiliar with where that is. Uh, but basically, yeah, you, you use the SDK to spin up one of these objects. You fill out some basic information like what form you want to hit, the, the instance ID of that form, what information you want to provide it, and you can invoke those forms from within other BlackBot features. Um, there, there are good and not so good ways to do that, but it depends on what you want to do. And we've, we've done that before. We've called other BlackBot features from BlackBot features using a mechanism that's either identical or similar to that. Okay. Uh, Eric, the the email is bbdevdays at blackbot.com. Okay. Arlette has a question about um, uh, updating constituents in batch. Um, how, is there, are there improvements um, through Sky API? I think we may have uh, uh, addressed that. And then she had a second question about making a payment on event registration. Is there a way to override that behavior? Arlette, I'm not sure that's specific enough for the, the group to answer. Yeah, and Arlette, I, I commented uh, in the text Q&A um, regarding this. Uh, it'd be good if we could get a little more details on the desired uh, kind of behavior here and the workflow that you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Yeah, I, and I would just add, you know, of course, you can always write your own specs and forms and, and use page designer to put them in anywhere, right? You could have your own custom pay for a registration piece. Now, payment code is particularly complicated, and so it might be better to use an extension or something else to, to customize that functionality. Um, but there might be some limitations. I'll let uh, designation for a non-charitable. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let send us the, the full details of what you're looking to do in terms of functionality to that BBDev days at blackbot.com, and we can see about getting back to you on that. We got about five minutes left. So last call for questions. Okay. Yes, Nathan uh, asked a question 
calls it super specific. Any ideas for inviting someone to an event besides email or mail? I'm assuming this refers to the event uh, functionality in CRM. Does anyone have an answer on this? How to invite someone to an event besides email or mail, like through an event platform or something like that? Um, if we're talking event platforms, right, there are, I think there are a number of third party developers writing pieces for other event invitations, maybe event platforms. I'm not sure if there are any specific out there for Blackboard CRM. Um, invited. But yeah, you can, you can obviously, if you're talking about just adding someone, you can manually add someone without sending an invitation. And there are probably integrations for doing it besides those two channels. But Nathan, please add more information here if, if there's something more specific you're looking for. Also, Laura, I just have an answer to your new UI work with custom UI models, custom tiles. We mentioned this earlier. We're still looking into this. So once we have an answer, we'll, we'll definitely put it out there. But it will be, it'll be a little while from now. Catherine asked, is there a BBCRM developers meetup group? Hmm. Um, this BB Dev Days event originally began life as a BlackBot CRM developers conference and expanded to include other BlackBot products. Um, so yes, you're you're in the OG meetup right now. Um, also, community.blackbot.com, um, there is a, um, a developer community within that community um, that I'd encourage you to check out and you know any opportunities for meetups regional events um, things of that nature are always going to be posted there so join that community for the latest and greatest on um, being a developer uh, for Blackboard solutions okay I'm gonna go ahead and we can continue and if there's other other questions, but I'm going to go ahead and launch the survey um, with just two minutes left in our time together. Um, it's just a few short questions. And as always, um, this uh, you answering this survey is really valuable in terms of how we continue to constantly improve our, de our developer engagement, this event, et cetera. So please take the, the few seconds to answer the questions in that survey. Rodrigo has a very specific 101 question. Uh, I need to call a particular Sprock at the end of a queue in CRM. Could I, uh, I could not find a standard process for that. What would be the best way to execute that? Um, we don't provide, typically provide a direct way to execute a stored procedure. What I would recommend is integrating it into something like a record operation or creating a new business process or other piece, right? So if you're thinking your queue needs to run on a record, a small number of records, a record operation might be appropriate. Otherwise, I'd recommend creating a business process or global change and just basically wrapping up your stored procedure in one of those two items. Yeah, I've, I've seen global changes being used to, to run a sort of a bulk update towards the end of uh, a queue execution. So that might be uh, appropriate in this case if uh, several records are uh, at play. Okay. And Cameron, you said, if we think of questions afterwards, would it be bbdevdays at blackbod.com? That's uh, that address is really for follow up from this specific event. Um, I there are a number of channels to reach a blackbot expert. Um, I, I did just put a, in a plug for the community, um, but I'll I'll say it again. Um, if you're if you have questions, if you're running into challenges, challenges, if you want to show off your great work, something that you've done that you think others might be interested in, please engage with us at community.blackbot.com. Um, if you're using Sky UX and, uh, or Sky API, Sky Framework, um, there's the Sky Developer Community. There is also a specific community for BlackBot CRM and BlackBot Internet Solutions um, that would also be a great place 
to engage with not only experts from Blackbaud, but other customers. All right, so we're at time. I wanna thank this group today for um, sharing your time with us uh, and thank all of you for uh, engaging with us. And please, um, again, if you haven't filled out the survey, please do before you leave the session. Uh, otherwise, have a great rest of your day and final day of the conference. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.